Mercy and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What does a normal day look like for you in your life? I imagine it really depends on the stage of life that we are in, right? Um, I would guess, well, you all woke up this morning, so that's a, a common theme, but we wake up in the morning and we kind of get ready for the day, right? We maybe eat our breakfast, we brush our teeth, we take a shower, we make ourselves presentable. For some of that, us, that includes drinking at least a couple cups of coffee to be presentable to the world. Um, but I, that's my, uh, my, my bad habit, right? But we, we, we get ready for the day. And then it's perhaps we have to get the kids ready for school, so we're helping someone get ready too, and we, we get them ready for school, and so then we have to pile everybody into the car, and that can be a quite traumatic event most days, getting everybody in the car with their shoes on, and it's usually dad who forgets a shoe, no, uh, uh, type of thing. And so we get there, we're in the car, and we, now we got to get the kids to school. So we drop off the kids, and, and, and we get to work, right? And so now we we're, we're finally can sit down at our desk or in our office or get busy swinging a hammer, whatever it might be, and we go about our day. We build, we type, we, we, we take care of the things that need to be taken care of. And then we eat lunch. And then we look at the clock over and over and over again and, and say, is it time to go home yet? And so we finally get to the end of the work day, and so we have to gather up whoever we need to gather up, right? And we, we collect the kids, we collect others around us, and we get back home, and we begin getting ready to eat dinner. We take care of the things that need to be taken care of. We wash the laundry. We wash the dishes. We, we take care of the yard. We shovel the snow. So much to do. So many things that have to be taken care of. And then we got to get ready for bed. And who getting ready for bed, that's always fun. You get the kids in bed, and, and there you go. Now you have a moment to sit down on the couch and do something. And you don't want to do anything, and, and maybe you just turn the TV on, and, and, or if you're really ambitious, you read a book, whatever it might be, and then you finally get your head on a pillow. And you lay down, and you fall asleep, hopefully for good dreams, but then you wake up, and you do it all over again. Why? Why do you do what you do? Why do you do all of those things? Why do you make sure that you get the tasks done? Why do you make sure that the kids are at school? Why do you do these things? The question for you to ponder today is that very question. Why do you do what you do? Now, I'm not asking you to reconsider and, and sell all of your possessions and, and wander around the, the, uh, the woods and, and something along those lines, because that question still remains, why do you do what you do? In our gospel lesson for today, this question is kind of floating around in the background. Here again, a section from the gospel today. When they found him on the other side of the sea. Remember, we have just had a feeding. Jesus gave thanks. He broke bread and he fed way more people than he should have been able to feed. And then he got across the sea, at least halfway across the sea in a, in a somewhat different manner. And that's why they were confused. You didn't get in the boat, but now you're on the other side of the sea. How did you get over here? Why are you over here? So they asked that very question. Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Interesting response. Jesus reading their hearts and their actions. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, 
which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who ha whom he has sent. The implied question behind Jesus' interaction with the crowd is why are you looking for me? Why are you seeking me out? Why are you doing what you are doing? And he calls them out for a lack of faith. He calls them out for being more concerned with filling their bellies with food than manners of eternal significance. He calls them out. He said, this is the work of God, to believe in the one whom he sent. Jesus calls them out for wanting to eat more bread, wanting to have more food to eat, or at least being more concerned with that matter than the things of first importance. The feeding of the 5,000 was pointing to the identity of who Jesus was. Yes, it filled their bellies. Yes, it provided them substance for the day or the evening or whatever it might have been, but the importance, the, the thing of first importance is the fact that Jesus, through his miracles, is showing the people who he truly is. He is the bread that is from heaven. He is the one whom God himself has sent. He is himself God incarnate. And they look for him. And they want more bread. They want more bread to fill their stomachs. And he asks them, why? Why are you looking for me? It's very easy for us to fall into a similar trap in life. And what I mean by that is it's very easy for us to be very concerned and consumed by making sure that our stomachs are full. making sure that the grass is mowed, making sure that the bills are paid, making sure that our kids are to their 43 activities on time, and we become consumed with these matters. There's nothing wrong with these things in and of themselves, there's nothing wrong with eating food. There was nothing wrong that the people enjoyed the food that Jesus gave to them. But when that becomes the focus, we have lost sight of the things that we must keep our eyes focused upon. I go to work, whatever my job is, so that I can have a paycheck, so that I can buy groceries and pay my bills I go to bed, and I do it all over again. Pastor, I, I, that's all well and good, but I'm not a pastor. I, I, my job's not like yours. I can't tell people, or I don't tell people uh, about Jesus day in and day out. That's not what I do, so I, I, that's just the reality. What we do, though, can always have our eyes focused on an eternal significance. Yes, even going to work when our jobs don't seem overly exciting, we can still have a focus on things of eternal significance. We can still say that I am doing my job to glorify God. I can still say that I'm doing my job so that I can use my gifts and abilities, and in turn, I do receive a paycheck and with that paycheck, I can glorify God in how I use it, what I do with it. I go to school because I have to, but I go to school because I can learn more, I can understand more, I can grow as a human being so that I can in turn glorify God, that I can strengthen my faith in Him through His Word, through His Spirit. We can always have an eternal perspective on even the most, man, the most boring of things in life. Even eating a piece of bread. 
we can say this is truly a gift from God himself. It is not what I deserve. It is not what I have even earned, but it is a gift from God himself. Christ has, call, or has called us to have everything be about him. Colossians 3, 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, not some things, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. We cannot simply dismiss this idea because it seems hard or it seems out of place in the culture that we find ourselves a part of. We are different than the world. We understand where our gifts have truly come from. Our gift of the food that we eat at home and even more so the gift of the food that we eat here in this place. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the bread from heaven, the word of God, that which we consume every single time we gather together, that through it he would strengthen us. He would strengthen our faith. Through it he would help us take our eyes off things of this world and help them to focus on him each and every day of our lives. John 6 is an interesting section of scripture. And it goes through a whole, a whole bunch of different things which we will hear about in the weeks to come in our readings. And it's challenging to those who heard them. And many of them even just walked away. It says this in verse 66, After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? All that we are, all that we do, has its focus on Christ. And if we're honest with ourselves, if I'm honest with myself, that's not always the case. It's very easy to get wrapped up in the matters of the world. It's very easy to get wrapped up in the things of our lives and be distracted from the very thing that holds us all together. It's very easy to just worry about what the next meal is going to be. And when we do that, though, it begins to consume us. It begins to, to, to weigh upon us. I don't know about you, but when my eyes are taken off of the very things that matter, that are of eternal significance, the stress levels begin to climb. Because the things out there don't take care of themselves. The things out there do not provide a stress-free life. But when we come to the foot of the cross, we don't have to bring a single thing. It's all there for us. And we simply receive and believe in the promises of God. May he be glorified in all that we do. And may we continue to feast upon the bread of heaven day after day after day. In Jesus' name, amen.